So yesterday, I booked a flight to Paris. Um, this is something that I've kind of known was coming up for a bit. Kind of meaning that like nothing was for sure. A lot of stuff in our lives is very like last minute. But I suspected that this might be a possibility. And now it is more than a possibility. It is finally actually for sure happening. Although let's be real, my brain is real crazy. I said it would feel like it was actually happening when I bought the flight, but now I'm more like It'll feel like it's actually happening when I leave for the airport. This is why I don't get excited about stuff in advance. Like, my brain doesn't let me. It's forever like, mmm, you sure about that? Might not happen. Don't hold your breath. <sighs> Y'all, I wore this dress for the first time and on that first occasion. Dropped food on myself and stained it. This is why I can't have nice things. Like, that's not even a joke. This is literally the reason that I do not buy actual vintage clothing because I will destroy it. Anyway, I feel like it is safe to finally say it's happening. I'm going to Europe for an unspecified amount of time. Right now, I do not have a return flight. And the reason that this is happening is because Matt had to go to Europe for work. And I was basically like, there's no way in hell that I'm not coming with you. I have wanted to go to France for as long as I can remember. I was actually hoping to study abroad in France, but the program that my college had was only for like the fall semester and I could only study abroad in the summer. So I went to Italy instead and zero regrets. Loved Italy. But yeah, even when I went to Europe later on, I ended up going to Iceland and Great Britain and I've just never made it over to France. I think I was expecting to work my way across the continent and then I ran out of money. So despite my general can't accept this until it's actually happening demeanor, I am very excited. <laughs> I'm leaving in like eight days, something like that. And in like four days, I have to take a road trip halfway across the country to drop off our puppy with a family member so that he can be watched while we're gone. But guess what I can accomplish in four days? That's right, a sewing project. Yay! So I'm gonna do a sewing project right now because I was digging through my fabric storage for my last sewing project and remembered that I have this. Tis Paris themed fabric. My mother-in-law got me this, I think actually in Paris the last time they went. It's freaking adorable, but I was like, what am I gonna use this for? Nothing was processing in my head for what I should make it for until I saw this right next to it. This is a tablecloth that I got at Goodwill. And when I saw it next to this Paris fabric, light bulb, a dress, revolutionary. I know. So I've been waiting to make this dress until I knew for sure that I was going to Paris because if you're going to make a dress out of Paris fabric, you gotta go wear it in Paris, man. Just kidding, you don't have to do that. Make a dress out of anything you want, wear it anywhere you want. But yeah, I'm gonna combine these two fabrics and make a uh, springy, summery, pretty, gorgeous dress. Can you tell that my plans are not firmly established yet? I'm gonna make a dress and then I'm gonna wear it in Paris and hopefully take pictures of myself in it. I have to say y'all, the last time that I traveled by myself, which yes, Matt will be there, but he will be working. So I'm basically traveling by myself. I took tons of photos, but I was in none of them. Every once in a while, I would take a selfie, but like that was not my focus. I took photos of the architecture and the landscape and the food. I didn't take photos of myself. And now that I've kind of shifted into this world of like, I have cute clothes, I wanna take photos of myself. It's a little bit nerve wracking for me. I just think photographing yourself when you're alone, it requires a lot of like creativity and confidence. I'd like to think that I have the creativity. I am not so sure I have the confidence, but I don't have to think about that for at least eight days. Let's go to the cutting table. This table is still covered in all the little fuzzy bits from the last things I cut out. <laughs> so I do kind of have a basic plan here, or rather I have specific things that I want and combining all of them ends up being a plan. I wanted to do 
big poofy sleeves. I think the best way to combine this fabric with this one would be to do a big like ruffle on the bottom of the dress. And then because I'm so obsessed with this dress right here and the princess seams in general, I thought princess seams. But I don't really want the raglan sleeves and this dress is meant to be stretchy. So I have this pattern, ignoring the little over thing here. This one is just a sleeveless crew neck princess seam dress. And then because it's just a sleeveless dress, I should in my head be able to draft out some puffed sleeves and slap them on there. The one thing I don't like about this is that it has not just the two princess seams, but also a seam right down the center of the dress, which one I'm like, why? But I mainly don't like that because I don't wanna cut this pattern up too much. I'm gonna see if it's necessary for that seam to be there or if they're trying to like make it easier for you to cut it out or save fabric or something. And if I can put it on the fold, I'm gonna do that. So this is getting set aside for now. We're focusing on this. You know what else I didn't do the last time that I traveled abroad is buy fabric. I did not buy much of anything other than food. And this time I'm like, okay, this is Paris. The, uh, the flea markets, the antique markets, the fabric stores. It's gonna be real tempting, but I would rather spend money on experiences and food, always food, than on actual items. I don't wanna end up in a place where I have to buy another suitcase in order to fit all of the things I have purchased. I'm already telling myself, no, 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 no. It's gotta be real special if you're gonna buy it. If I leave this microphone on, I am gonna talk so much. All right, fabric's good. Let me just explore this pattern, which is stressing me out before I even open it because it is thick, which I don't get because the thing it's making is very simple. It's, it's very simple designs. Why is it this thick? Oh my God. I like how they have a whole section on how this dress should fit you. And it's basically just repeating like, it should fit you correctly. Oh, this is why there's so many pattern pieces. It's cause they have to have different pattern pieces for every cup size. I don't like this. You're giving like some really specified specifications here. All right, so fair enough. I get it. It shouldn't be that hard. They're making it sound a lot harder than it is, in my opinion. Uh, here goes nothing. Oh my God. Uh, uh, so much paper. I hate this so much. Back for A, B, and C. All right. <sighs> what? That seems terrible. All right. I realize that I get like unnecessarily angry about patterns. It's just how it is. That, whoo, with much stress. I have survived the pattern selection. Now I just have to cut all of it out. We are not filming that. I managed to get all of the main dress pieces onto the Paris fabric by some miracle. And in typical me fashion, even managed to add an extra three inches to each of the side panels so the skirt will be floofier around the hem. You know I need that swoosh. I think I might even be able to squish some pockets on here. Although there is absolutely no way we're gonna get the sleeves out of this fabric. Okay, so rather than cutting out the pink stuff now, I'm gonna just sew this whole thing together and then I'll decide what I'm adding to it. These are my side front panels. They're gonna get pockets because yes. I did not have enough fabric to cut out the pockets, so I cut them out of a white material instead, and then I'm putting like a little facing or placket, I don't really know what you would call it, right on the edge so that as you're putting your hands in your pocket, if a little of it opens or something, you don't just see white. So <laughs> let me just figure that out real fast. I'm hungry.
I'm gonna pause and eat ice cream. Okay, so I just kind of started sewing and now I have half the dress put together. The pockets gave me problems. As usual, the fraying edges are just stressing me out. You know, I keep saying like, Oh, I don't want to pay for a serger right now. I don't have a place to put a serger right now. I don't want to have to like deal with getting the thread and having to thread it and having to fix it whenever problems happen. Because, you know, the sergers we used in our costume shop when I was back in college were just always acting up and so they kind of became like the doom machines for me. But you know, as much as I lean towards using knit so this isn't a problem, I end up using woven fabrics a lot. Why would you want to add any amount of stress to the sewing experience? Try to keep it as pleasant and enjoyable as possible. And if you can accomplish that by getting a serger, then, you know, go get a serger. Maybe when I get back from this trip. What are we doing here? What did I do there? What are we doing in general? What is life? Yeah, all right, it happened. I knew it was gonna in a minute. You know, I feel like when I look at fancy sewing machines, it's always like, they can do a hundred different kinds of stitches, which I'm like, why would I need that? Straight, zigzag, that's all I need. What I want in a fancy sewing machine is one that like beeps when you're about to run out of bobbin thread, or just when you have run out of bobbin thread, something that will warn me so I'll stop sewing. Cause oh my God, I have sewn for so long before realizing I was not actually sewing. Oh, I don't like that. What just happened? Oh, that was on me. I didn't put it in the tension thing. Um, I'm gonna try sewing with this, but I might regret it. It looks bad, like real, real bad. Look at that. That's not what you want. Whoopsies. This is what happens when I start talking to a camera instead of focusing on what I'm doing. We're about to be done for the night anyway. I'm losing focus. What do we think? Did it cause problems? I mean, it seems okay for now. We're gonna leave it and we're gonna keep on going. Okay, so we have the basic dress in need of a zipper in the back. It definitely needs adjustment. It's a good start. I don't really wanna work on it anymore tonight. So I'll come back to it tomorrow and then I can take everything in. I need to finish all of the seams inside. Once I do that, I guess I'll just like zigzag stitch them or something. I'm kind of thinking now that I want the sleeves even more than I want the tear on the bottom or the ruffle on the bottom. I guess we'll see, won't we? Tomorrow. Hey, how are you? Where you been? I've been up for hours. Hi! No, but really, I did all the boring stuff this morning uh, without filming because who cares? And we basically have a dress. Is that some good water? I was able to use my uh, very helpful partner this morning to pin me up in the back because I don't know how you're supposed to do that if you don't have a dress form and you don't have somebody to pin something on you. How are you supposed to pin a dress all the way up your back so that you can see how it fits before putting in the zipper? It's a mystery. So Matt pinned me up and I was able to adjust the fit and get the zipper put in and then finish all the seams on the inside which took for freaking ever. But yeah, it's actually super duper cute and it fits pretty well now that I tweaked it. One thing that I did run into, let me get nice and close so you can see. Um, I had to add darts right here because I didn't have a seam down the center to adjust. So the neckline ended up being kind of gapey and you couldn't get rid of that gapage by taking in these seams or even these seams. The only thing I could do was take in some place on the front of the neckline itself. So it was either gonna be like a single dart down the center and then I came up with this, which looks much better because it just looks like it's a, a seam that's supposed to be there. So this is definitely a good pattern for a non-stretch material princess seam dress. I didn't like that I had to adjust all of the seams after making it, but like, I guess that's a normal thing. Now it's time to add sleeves. And then I think with whatever material I have left, I am going to add a ruffle to the bottom just because I put it on over this skirt earlier. So I have sort of a ruffle hanging out and I do like the way that it looks. I think it'll be super cute in the pink fabric. So that's happening. Let's do it. 
Okay, so I've never made a puffed sleeve before because <laughs> sleeves are still kind of new for me in general. And um, no joke, the way that I went around trying to figure out how ended up being so stupid and delightful. I looked up how to make a puff sleeve and then I was not immediately thrilled with the results that I was getting because all of them were like not very puffed at all or their directions were like super specific. A lot of them were being like, take your sleeve pattern. Like you already have a sleeve pattern to start with and change it like this. And I was like, I don't have a sleeve pattern to start with. Uh, yeah, so that took me literally like 30 seconds to get bored. And I was like, where's that video where Rachel Maxey made giant puffed sleeves? So I found her video where she made jack-o'-lantern sleeves and paused the moment where she was holding up the sleeve pattern and went, okay, it's about that shape. She's holding it like this and the curve is here, so it's about that big. The height looks like it's maybe two and a half to three hands. And that is how I drafted my sleeve design. <laughs> is this easier than just finding a pattern? No, I don't think it is. I'm not trying to pretend it is. I would never say that this is an easier option. It is simply the creative way that my brain likes to operate. Good times, but here's the fun thing. This tablecloth that I'm using is already curved on the ends. So my thought is I can use the two ends as the puffed sleeve. This can be this shoulder curve and then I'll just cut it in a little closer to get sort of the uh, underarm region. And then all of this square stuff left over will perfectly be ruffles. So am I going to hardcore wing this? You bet I am. Curve, 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 curve. I mean, these are gonna be giant. It'll be grand. I also don't know if I'm gonna put like a cuff around the bottom or just elastic. I don't know, we'll figure that out. Winging it. Oh, I'm going rogue. I think that looks like a sleeve shape. Be honest with me, is this too big for a sleeve? It could be an entire dress and that's one sleeve. But is this stupidly too big? I can keep speculating all day or I can just go sew it. Let's find out. It's my chair. Is this your video now? Oh, thank you. Y'all, it worked, kind of. Uh, my little cuff that I decided to add on the bottom is hella janky, but <laughs> you can't really see it because of how giant the sleeve is. <laughs> Boom! So yeah, as expected, it's not like a stiff enough fabric to actually stand out and it's not filled with anything or interface, so why would it? So it's just kind of drapey, but the sleeve itself ends here because that's how long I made the little tapered sides, which is what I wanted. I wanted the cuff of the sleeve to be above my elbow. And then you just get this massive droopy droopy floppiness. Let's add the other one. How did I do that? How do I do it again? Ah, that was too far. I forgot what I was doing. Gathering is so much fun. Honestly, sometimes it is. When you're gathering the right fabric and it's like really slippery and smooth and it just like it's very satisfying. If you're gathering the uh, not right kind of fabric that doesn't like together super smoothly, then it's just kind of like, yeah, yeah. All right, right sides together. We're gonna sew the little small strip. Now I shall add the cuff. Ow, get in there. Yeah, sure. I sewed the right side of the cuff to the wrong side of the sleeve. Why? Can I remedy this without actually unpicking it? How lazy can I be? You know how like if you look at old garments, you examine them close up. Not really that I've ever done this, but this is what I've heard. You can see like places where they've made mistakes and where they've pieced things together, where they've made it work. I sincerely hope that if my garments 
somehow, miraculously, survived the next hundred years, that someone would pick it up and be like, ah, oh, look here where she put the cuff on the wrong way and chose to leave it that way anyway. What does this teach us about humans of a hundred years ago? It teaches us that they were just as lazy as we are today. This is gonna work. Uh-huh. I don't know where that went. Oh. Yeah. Does it look great? You know what? Actually, it looks fine. It looks fine. Now I just gather the whole top part of this giant ass sleeve and sew it to the dress. We we got a little balloon. All right, so we have our massive puffed sleeves. Kind of loving that. I took the remaining tablecloth and cut it into four strips. So I basically have about 240 inches of fabric to ruffle onto the hem of this dress, which the hem is like less than a hundred around. So <laughs> that might actually end up being like too ruffly, too poofy. It's a theme. It seems to be what always happens for me. Uh, yeah. So that's probably going to be the rest of the day is ruffling all of this. I'm gonna get on that now. I mean, I might go eat ice cream first, but then I'm gonna get on it. Hi. It is the next morning and I am still gathering. Mm. You know how I said some fabrics are just super satisfying together? This fabric is the exact opposite of those fabrics. Yeah. I've done about one third of it so far. My arm is sore. It's fine. I'm not actually in that much of a rush. I have time. Is this not the most riveting of content? Are you not entertained? <gasps> it has been three hours. I wish I was kidding. But at last, we sew the very last seam on this dress. Okay, okay, let's do it. We're doing okay. Everything is okay. Sewing over pins. Do you do it? I feel like that says a lot about you as a sewist, whether or not you're comfortable sewing over pins. I am not. I don't really know what it says about you, but I feel like it says something. <sighs> Tell me I'm done. Tell me I'm done, cause I really, really, really wanna be done. Oh, I was so close to running out of thread. <gasps> this is it. We're done, so I guess I'll see you in Paris. Maybe. Hopefully. I guess it's more of like, hopefully I'll find a place to wear this in Paris and be able to take pictures of myself in it. Hi. Uh, so I'm not in France anymore. I'm back in LA. I got here like three hours ago. My body currently thinks it's about 4 a.m. But I thought, hey, let me finish editing this video. Um, I recorded an outro little chat in France after I finished filming footage of the dress in the backyard of the very lovely Airbnb where I was staying. Let me just, let me just show you what I got. Ah, well there's something on my arm. What are you? Do I even want to know? Please hold. Yeah, so that like clunk sound on the end there, that's the sound of this disconnecting from this, which means there's no sound for the next 10 minutes 
that I sat there talking. Did I notice? No. Did I check afterwards to see if the footage was decent? Also no. I will be honest, at this exact moment, with this amount of brain function, I don't really remember what I said. But let me try to recap here. I'll do my best. What? were my thoughts. Maybe I'll just put the silent footage over me. None of the mouth movements will match. So first of all, I um, only kind of technically wore the dress in Paris. I'm calling it a technical win because this location is Paris, kind of. It's a little bit outside of Paris, but I'd say it counts. One thing I did not realize is that spring does not always equal warm. So for one thing, that dress was kind of hard to just like throw on and wear for a day because it was too cold. But also, uh, I quickly realized that like Paris fashion is like serious fashion, AKA boring fashion. I don't know, maybe it's because it was still coat weather, but like, Everyone was dressed in black, navy blue, or tan. Like, you did not see cute outfits anywhere. And on top of that, we were staying in a very, like, business district area. So all of my days started with walking through a crowd of business people and then taking a metro ride. So it was even harder for me to like have the confidence to wear something like brightly colored and girly and feminine and cute and stand outy and like stroll through this crowd of business people. So ultimately I ran out on one of like my last days there to the nice little grove of trees down in front and it was a Sunday so it was pretty deserted. There were a few other people out there but I was like, I can do this. I'm gonna take my whole tripod and camera out there by myself wearing this dress and I'm gonna film myself briefly. And you know what, ironically, right next to me, there were two guys who were also filming and photographing each other and they were doing like the, the ridiculous like, poses. They looked silly. I looked silly. It's okay to look silly. But here's what they had that I didn't have. Each other. It really helps when you're doing something like wearing a cute outfit and getting pictures in it to have a second person. One, so that they can take the pictures because otherwise you either have to have a tripod or you have to get really creative with where you're sticking your phone. And two, because if you're gonna feel a little bit silly, it just helps to have a support person feeling a little bit silly with you. So all that to say, um, I did not get pictures in front of the Eiffel Tower or in, other places that I went. Wow, I need to, I need to sleep y'all. I did not wear this dress to any of the cute places and you know what, that's okay because you know where I did wear it is in the very cute Airbnbs that I stayed in in other parts of France. Oh Lord. Oh yeah, I was gonna talk about what's coming up. As mentioned, I just got back from France. I ended up spending a full month there and there's going to be several travel themed videos coming out over the next several weeks on my channel rather than my traditional project stuff. I'm not turning into a travel channel, I promise. I know not everybody's into those videos, but ultimately I haven't worked on any projects in a month, so I don't have anything to share. And I would rather share something than just leave my channel empty for a month. Also sharing about traveling is fun. So if you like the travel stuff, that's gonna be coming up. If you're not crazy about it, just hold out for a few more weeks. I have so, so, so many projects lined up and uh, pfft, as soon as I get some sleep, I'm getting started on them. Okay, thanks, bye. There's a loud plane right now, it's still going. I wanna live where the noise is not. I don't know why I just brought the zipper out here with me. Ugh. Why did I put a pin here? What did this mean? I don't remember. Tuck under there. Tuck yourself under. I ain't complaining. Ah. Brain. Brain. Can you complete? Okay, fine. Mm -hmm.